And good evening, football fans, and welcome to Elida High School in week number four. So the Elida Bulldogs host the Ottawa Glandorf Titans in Western Buckeye League play. Hi, everybody. Garrett Mansoud alongside Scott Bag. We're going to the action here tonight. And uh, Scott, Elida's 3-0. 2-0 in the league, OG 0-3, 0-2. A couple teams that have gone opposite directions to start the year, but definitely a matchup that has plenty of intrigue as far as OG's history against the lineup. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you can look at the schedule or the, the records like you just mentioned. The lot is 3-0 and and they've won three. OG is 0-3, as you mentioned. But they have fourth quarter leads in all three of those losses. And if you look at the score, some of them are lopsided 52 to 29. You know, they just kind of implode in the fourth quarter. And that's kind of a, a, one of their keys is to finish. They haven't finished all year, and therefore they're 0-3. Elida's finishing, they're 3-0. So it's it's a battle. And, you know, they're 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. You know, a lot of them, they got to learn stuff. Some OG's got a lot of kids playing some spots that they're not used to, so they're kind of learning the system, learning where they're supposed to be. That's causing some problems. Elida comes back with some guys that are playing in the in the – let's say special uh, positions that are doing really, really well and, and um, they're excelling. OG's kind of trying to learn on the fly, so to speak. Absolutely. We'll get you the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. When we come back, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Elida. And we take a look closer at this football game between the Titans and the Bulldogs. Thanks to Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Well, Scott, we look a little closer. You mentioned in the in the opening that finish is one of the big ones for Ottawa Glendorf. What are the other keys to the game for the Titans come out on top tonight? Again, the Titans they gotta have they have to be gap sound, right? They they uh, Elida runs a lot of misdirection stuff, so they have to be in their gaps because if you over pursue, they're gonna run right behind you, right? You also gotta set the edge. The reason for that is because Etzcorn is averaging six yards a carry, and if they don't set the edge, he can get outside, and that's what they really want to do. They want to get him outside and get him loose, get him in space. He's an athlete. They want to get him outside, so OG's got to stay gap sound, and they got to make sure they set the edge because if he gets outside, he can, that's where he does a lot of his damage. And on the flip side for Elida, they are the ones defending home field tonight, undefeated record. What would Coach Harmon and his crew have to do to continue that? Well, I, I think Elida, and, and really OG too, and, and this is going to sound mundane and whatever, but I think both teams have to pass to run. They have to run to pass. And what I mean by that is you got to play a complete game because if you get one-dimensional, you know, if they can't pass, OG can load seven, eight, nine guys in the box, and they can take away the run. And then now you don't get Edscorn out on the outside getting his six yards. They have to have that little bit of pass to have them scared so now they can play off a little bit and not load the box. There's the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game. And the opening kick from Ethan Ramsdale is a touchback in the OG offense will roll out onto the field led by junior quarterback Peyton Coleman, 6'2", 175. And on the season, third in the WBL in passing so far, over 560 yards, six touchdowns, four interceptions, and another rushing score. Uh, but as far as throwing the football to be able to run it, Ottawa Landorf really is able to spread it out, distribute it well, and we'll get a look at their first play from the shotgun as Coleman drops the throw. It's a near side pitch, incomplete as he was targeting Jordan Metzger. Yeah, they had they had two receivers out there in the flat. They you know they uh, Elida's playing off afraid of getting run by this early in the game. And uh, they were content of giving up that five yard little hitch. And Kuman just kind of threw it into the grass. And it might be because uh, he didn't have a very good game. Last couple games he threw some interceptions. So maybe he's kind of doubting his skills a little bit. Kind of looks like that when he kind of aimed it instead of threw it. This time they're going to flip the formation. Near side single receivers Grant Schrader to the near side. And it will be a give trying to get around the edge. Alex Schrader tackled just outside the numbers. Good pursuit by the Bulldogs to bring up third down and long. Yeah, Tyler Seifker did a heck of a job from his defensive line position. He just beat the Alex block Schrader. and run right across his face and ran down the ball carrier. Heck of a play for the uh, defensive lineman. Let's meet the, the 
Starting five up front for Ottawa Glandorf on the line. Connor Kitchens, a senior. Austin Haley, a junior. Uh, Hayden Kaufman in the middle as a junior. Cooper Neese and Dylan Seifger. There's the five up front. And I'm also seeing down the field William Golker uh, in there at right tackle. So it might be a substitution there early as a pass in the middle goes to Vinny Brinkman. He has it, but he is gobbled up quickly by a pack of Bulldogs just beyond the 20-yard line, and it's fourth down already for the Titans. Yeah, good job. Everything was covered. That little crossing pattern for Vinny, and he, he had a check down the receiver. Didn't really want to do that, but he did such a good job of taking away all the other receivers he had to uh, because, you know, his clock was going off. He had to get rid of the ball. Connor Kitchen will drop to punt this football away. Seth Sharp will be back to return the punt for Elida just on his other side of the 50. And good penetration, and the punt is blocked back of the end zone for his safety. Parker Krim got through the line and knocked down the Kitchen punt, and it's 2 0 Elida. Yeah, he, he was there along with about four other of his friends. They, they went right through that line. Can't ask for a better start on the defensive side of the football for Elida. They score without the offense having to touch the football. Yeah, and giving up, what, maybe three yards from the line of scrimmage. So in three plays, give up three yards and uh, get a two-point safety there. They will get the football back as a result. Yep. Lucky for OG, that one, I mean, uh, Krim knocked that all the way out, out of the end zone because if that would have died in the middle of the end zone, there was 40 Lida guys that could have pounced on that. OG is yep. very, very lucky to only come away with only two points here instead of uh, six. Saw it again on the Web Insurance Agency Instant Replay. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Our first blood on the structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard tonight as the Bulldogs will get the football on the free kick. Ottawa Glendorf will have a free kick from their own 20 yard line. So the punter will come out and punt the ball from the 20 and Elida, no matter what, is gonna come away with some uh, great field position. And early momentum, Bulldogs 3-0, 2-0 in the WBL and Scott, it's early in the season, but you look at the top of the Western Buckeye League standings, and it's three teams all named the Bulldogs <laughs> at the top. Defiance, right. Salina, and Elida all right there looking down on the rest of the conference, and they've all had some impressive victories so far. And uh, going to be a big test tonight. Defiance tangles with, with Van Wert coming off of last week's loss to Salina. <laughs> Yeah, this is also dangerous territory. You got uh, Amari Wash back there and Edscorn. Wash has some really uh, sprinter speed, and Edscorn, like I said earlier in the broadcast, six yards of carry, so he knows what to do when he gets in the open, for, open in the court. This is Tyler Hohenbrink. Hats it on the tee, and it's going to go Wash's direction, and actually. It's Etzcorn that stumbles but has it picked up. Opening in the middle of the field, still on his feet at midfield and dragged down over the 45 by the kicker, Cohenbrink. There is a flag down on the play. I wonder if that was uh, a horse collar. Looked like he, you know, he kind of tackled him a little. Tackle by Griffin Beckett and A little high, but uh, we'll see what, what the call is. See what they come away with here. First penalty of the game. And it's going to come back a little bit. So the first thing to go to OG's uh, way here, they got a penalty. So here comes the offense. Led by Ryan Magoo, 6'4", 205, junior. Plenty of weapons, David Etzcorn, as we've talked about. Number three in the Western Buckeye League in rushing, over 300 yards. And also four touchdowns on the season. He's behind him with a pistol to start the offensive side for the black and orange. And it's Etzcorn, left side. He'll be cut down pretty quickly. Grant Evers on the stop around the right end. And then it'll be second down, medium range 
for Elida just across midfield. Yeah, good job by uh, Grand Evers right there to uh, push that one back in. So maybe they uh, talked a lot in um, practice this week about setting the edge. Notice they didn't allow him to get outside, and they got him to go back in right into the linebackers. Kolvat and uh, Walsh inside of Sharp, and it's going to go to Wash on the outside. He gets outside the numbers of the 40, ripped out of bounds, pursued by Jordan Metzger. And that'll be a first down brought to you by Citizens National Bank for the Elida Bulldogs. Good job by pursuit by Metzger to go get that because if he, I don't think if he misses that tackle, uh, Wash might have made that into the, into the end zone there. With the fresh set of downs, with Magoo looking at that armband, and now they're going to set up, split Cole Vault out to the right side, and Walsh will be in motion, has the give, trying to get outside the hashes, now cuts it up to the 31. A couple of white shirts in the vicinity. I think we're going to call Evers' name again out there. Yeah, Evers did, and, and Metzger was there to help clean up a little bit. So at the 31 second down for Elida, the victories so far for the Bulldogs. A 42-6 win at home over Rogers. Went to Shawnee and beat the Indians 13-9. And then last week, a thrilling 30-22 win over Kenton. And driving here up 2-0, a block punt for a safety. There's the Magoo snap. Goes back to the well for Wash. Over the 30 and hit at the 26. I'll be close to a fresh set of downs and see where they mark it, and they're going to move it for the Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, and if you're a Titans fan, seeing that on, if there was seven guys just surrounding him, so he kind of ran into the middle of that circle and he got engulfed by the Titans. So, you know, it, it is some good that the Titans are getting seven, eight guys to the ball. The only thing is they got to get there a little bit quicker instead of six yards down the field. Elida going with some... Uh, a little bit deliberate pace here. And the give goes inside for Atscord as he tries to get outside. A little counter off the left and short gain for the Bulldogs. And Dane Dooling from his defensive end position came there and ran it down from back. Again, that's, I think that's OG being in the gap, not getting, not allowing him to cut back. And, and you know, he's kind of was, he slow played that, right? Because he, he was looking for the cutback lane and allowed Dane Doolin to ke catch him from behind. Starters up front for Elida include Parker Krim, Tyler Seifger, Landon Kreitz, Travis Atkins, and Titus Daly. Playing in front of these skill guys. Here's that scoring off the right side. A great hole opened up on that side of the line. He's over the 20 and barrels his way inside the Dales concrete red zone. And be close to first down yardage as well, but it looks like a third and short here for Elida. Yeah, a great job. This you could that hole on the right side. He could run three of them through there. It was big enough. The, the right side of that offensive line sure made a, a good gap for him to run through and allowed him to get to open space. First time all night for him. We're starting to see how Edscorn is able to put up the numbers he is. He's low center of gravity, but shifty. And here's Wash. Or the speed on the outside, cuts it back, and a great move inside the five, heading for the goal line, but he's going to be just shy. Handful of Titans on the stop to keep Alana out of the end zone. They're on the way, on the doorstep, deep inside that Dale's Concrete red zone. Called Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. From the one now for the Bulldogs. Magoo in the gun. That scorn. And he pushes his way across the stripe for his fifth rushing score of the season. Yeah, not bad when he got those big fellas up front just moving that pile back. You just got to run behind your, your uh, buddies and just keep the knees a churning and get yourself right in the end zone. Easy, probably one of the easiest touchdowns he's had all year. That's touchdown thanks to Lee's famous recipe chicken. And Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's, Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Here's the PAT off the toe of Ethan Ramsdale, and it is good. 
Uh, Fat Jack's Pizza, extra points. Fat Jack's Pizza, get to Fat Jack's before or after the game and enjoy delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. We'll take a timeout, 6.42 to go in quarter one, 9-0 Elida over OG when we return. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's brought you that last light of touchdown. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. And also that extra point was kicked through thanks to Fat Jack's Pizza. Get the Fat Jack's before and after the game. Enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. This first quarter is also brought to you by T&D Interiors for quality you can stand on. Visit TND Interiors on Allentown Road. Right down the field went Elida. A safety and a touchdown through this first quarter. And now, big drive here, Scott, early on for Ottawa Glandorf as they get the football back. Schrader brings it up near the 30, but. You know, we're, we're going to see the response here from the Titans. Yeah, and, was, and you know, they're up to the 30, so it's a better starting position than they did last time. So, you know, OG's got to get some positive yardage. they got to at least, if nonetheless, flip the field, right, to get get something positive. You know, Kayla, or, um, Peyton Kuhn has got to complete a few passes, you know, maybe get some confidence, get his feet set, and allow so you can pass the run, run the pass that we talked about in the, in the pregame. Going to sling this out. And Vinny Brinkman was looking upfield before securing that. Brinkman actually leading rusher on this OG team at the start of the year. Yeah, he just tried. He took his eyes off it. He was looking up upfield because he had, I think he felt that he had some open daylight in front of him, and he was trying to turn upfield before he had the ball first. Split four outs, but Metzger in between Brinkman. And Ethan Metzger on this right side and be a keeper for Coolman around the left. He'll get three or four. He'll make it a third down and manageable. A lot more plays on the play sheet in this direction than a little further back. Absolutely. So now the Titans lining it up again. 0-3, as you mentioned, entering play. 21-18 loss at Eastwood. Kenton, a 52-29. Loss and a 45-0 loss last week to Wapak. And a third down pass caught by Brinkman. And a lot of black shirts swarm to him for a short gainer. I think that was the same play that they tried to run the first down. And he had five or six yards in front of him. And that time, Elida kind of snuffed that one out right away. And they, uh, they basically came off the receivers. And there was three guys there before Brinkman even caught that ball. I'll be dropping back to punt again. And they will set Sharp back to return for Alina. This time, Kitchen gets it away. Caught at the 40. And it's actually Etzkorn back, and he's going to shed a couple of tacklers. going to cross midfield, and the Alina new drive will start at the 48 of Ottawa Glandworth. Nice return for the Bulldogs, who are seeking a 4-0 start for the second year in a row. Last season, it was that brilliant start, and then fell mercy to the schedule almost, and dropped six straight to close the year. If anybody knows familiar territory, that's kind of where it's been for Elida. Inside handoff, that's scoring ahead. If you're out of Glandor, if the 0-3 beginning, they're coming off a, a season where they finished 2-8. and It's been 20 years since the Titans have had a season of that sort. However, Scott doesn't, you don't have to really rack the memory too long and see the team back in 2021, I think started 0-3, 0-4, and then all of a sudden you look up and they're in the state semifinals. Right, yeah, I think they were 0-2 actually, but yeah, they were 0 something. Oh, Pass. great, great yeah. defense there by Griffin Simon there. Stayed right with the receiver and kind of got his head around when, when uh, the receiver turned back and knocked that one away. 
That was intended for Keaton Hockey. Yeah, good, great inside position as well to knock that one away. Set up third down and six from the 45. Titans uh, rotating some fresh defensive linemen to keep keep the pressure on and contain Etzcorn. Yeah, this is the time where you have the ability to run the football like Kalita can do as Magoo drops the throw, completes it to Etzcorn out in the flat to the right side. He's going to be hit at the sticks. Does he have enough forward progress? And they're going to mark him there. Chain Gang will do their work. Looked like Alex Schrader among the first there. Uh, the Titan coaching staff, I think, wanted to hold out there on the receiver, but didn't get it. Another Citizens National Bank. First down for Elida. You know, I'm really impressed with Ryan Magoo and how his poise back there. He's cool, calm, and collective on them little swing passes. And Doing a wonderful job tonight so far. He goes back to Ed scoring again. Gets sent to the 30 this time, but a flag came in behind the play. This is in the direction of holding, and that's exactly what it is. It's going to be coming back for the Dogs. All right, get Ed scoring off the field, and they'll throw Cameron Coffin into the lineup for. The Bulldogs. Yeah, kind of looking down. That's going on. He looks like he's winded. I don't know if he caught one in the uh, – knocked the wind out of him there or what, but he, he's kind of struggling a little bit. And uh, Tough young man. He'll be right back in there, I'm sure. Drops back the Bulldogs to first and 20. This is really about where this drive began. Back near midfield. Kaufman with the give between the tackles. And he'll roll his way near the 40. Almost got that penalty yardage back. Jaden Guerra and others in there for Ottawa Glandorf. Nick a, Ellerbrock, too. Yeah, what a luxury it is to be able to bring in your backup running back and he gets you eight on his first carry. Not, not bad. Don't need to get the 28 for a first down. Got a couple plays to work with. And the Titans just looking for a, a stop here. That Those penalties can be drive solers. Look to get a line off the field for the first time. Not a whole lot has gone their direction here in this first quarter. Here's the Magoo fake and the keeper. Right, Magoo on the keeper. And he's going to drag a couple of tacklers to the 36. Third long on the way for Elida. Good Tackle job by the Titans Gilly. to stay, stay in their gap and, and not rush up the field and get kicked out and then uh, stayed in there and be able to make the tackle on Magoo for a three, four yard game. It's been third and eight to get Edscorn back in the football game. Send Sharp, Jackson Colvault, and Amari Wash all to the right side of the formation. Now Ottawa Glandorf is gonna bring four and a leaping catch at the 22 by Seth Sharp, but an impressive jump throw or jump catch for a fresh set of downs. Hit his man in stride, a good looking throw from Magoo. Yeah, absolutely, he looked off the deep safety to get him to the middle of the field and then came back, knew where he wanted to throw that ball the whole time, knew that slant was coming, he was gonna to have to get clear of the zone and he got right in the middle and he threw it right to him. Perfect pass, perfect spot, hit him on, on cue. Last minute and a half of the quarter as Etzcorn gets a pitch out to the left. Pushed ahead for a couple, but quickly stopped by that Titan front. Good job of keeping the edge, right? Grant, uh, Alec Schrader was out there, and he wouldn't let him get outside and send him right into his friends on the inside, and they made the tackle for a yard gain. What a way to play defense there by Alec Schrader. Second and nine, and... See what Elida decides to do here. Really only have to take another snap for the end of the quarter. Kind of a crooked number up there. Nine nothing in this first quarter. As Magoo lets that play clock run down. It's at five now. And we're going to get a whistle and a timeout taken by Elida. We'll take one too, courtesy of Metzger Financial Services. 
Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll be back to Elida for the final 38 seconds of this first quarter, WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Well, that scoreboard reads 9-0 in the late stages of the first quarter. Elida just inside the Dales Concrete red zone. Second down from the 20 as Magoo drops the throw. Here's pressure and the ball, ball came loose. out. He got smacked in the back by Dean Dooling, and the Titans recover. Scott, almost on cue. You were yep. saying during the break how big of a defensive possession and a bend-don't-break mentality for the Titans. They needed it. And yeah, and what I was referring to in the break was Titans, you know, this is a big drive because if they would got scored on, you know, they, they could have won two ways. They could have hung their head or dug themselves out of the hole, but that is a huge break that they needed to see if they now they got momentum on their side and they can parlay this with something on offense. See there on the Web Insurance Agency replay. And now Peyton Coleman back at the controls for the Titans. There's a give. Grant Evers, but not a whole lot of place to run as the Bulldogs gobble him up. Yeah. So far tonight, Eli has been controlling the line of scrimmage. And, you know, if you're a football coach, every football coach, if you ask them for their stats, what's one of the three things that they say? Control the line of scrimmage. And right now, Eli is controlling the line of scrimmage, and that's why they're up 9 nothing. OG can't run. And when they do pass, it's got to be a quick short out. And uh, Elida usually is there and right on top of it. And that will bring us to the end of quarter number one, where that structure out to our Ohio scoreboard reads, Elida 9. And out of Glendorf, zero. We'll take our timeout, flip ends, and be back for quarter number two. You're watching high school football, Western Buckeye League style tonight on WOSN. Start of the second quarter from Elida, and it's brought to you by T&D Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TND Interiors on Allentown Road. And also, John Stocker. DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. First play of quarter two. Incomplete out of the break for Ottawa Glandorf. A safety after a three and out by Ottawa Glandorf, a blocked punt out of the back of the end zone and a one-yard running touchdown by David Etzorn. And that's where we are, 9-0 Elida on their home field. Third and long for the Titans here. Quarterback Peyton Kuhlman has his men at the line. And he takes the snap. Pressure on its way from Krim. And it's going to force Kuhlman into a kind of a hurried decision, incomplete. Parker Krim came off that edge and was in Kuhlman's face right away. Yeah, and I do like the play call by the Titans, right? What a way to slow down this pass rush because they've been getting across that line of scrimmage. OG's having a hard time controlling that. What better way to maybe have them kind of slow themselves down to, to maybe hit them with a screen pass, but unfortunately uh, the Titans overthrew the intended receiver. Three possessions, three, three and outs, and a beauty of a punt for Connor Kitchen, and it rolls all the way inside the 10 and picked up at the six, and here's a gutsy return yeah. from Seth Sharp, but that was a beaut off the right foot of Connor Kitchen. <laughs> I bet you not many of the Atlanta coaching staff like, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. But, you know, the good thing that he did do, he, would, he went back, he got by it, and he kind of like looked around to see what the Titans were going to do. And then he realized that they were like 10 yards away. So he reached down and, and thought he could maybe catch them like sleeping. So it was a very heady play, but I'm still nonetheless, the coaches probably a lot of were saying, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> but the punt, the great neutralizer. 
as Ottawa or make that Elida pinned back up in their own zone. And Magoo in the gun. Edscorn takes the give around left side and pushing near the 20. Still be a three or four yard shy of first down territory. Turnover margin right now for Atlanta. You know, they're th a 3 0 football team, but now because of that fumble on their last possession, they're minus three in the turnover margin. That was something that Coach Harmon is looking out for. You said win the line of scrimmage. Well, I think the next one that's out of their mouths are yeah. usually win the, the turnover, turnover battle. battle. Yes, you are correct on that one. Here's the give Good inside. Good job by Dane Dooling there to get shed the blocker and come in there, play his gap, and make the quick tackle. Not letting that's going to get going there. So third down from the 20. And see the Bulldogs be looking for a big push here, but the Titans see if their defense can continue to be part of the equation tonight. You know, you know they kind of struggled a little bit early. That first drive, they were kind of on their heels, but the last two drives, Titans have been pretty aggressive and getting, getting after it a little bit here. There's the pitch. Ed Scorn puts his head down, and he's got what he needs for a new Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, the Titans, I'm sure the defensive coaching staff is going to look at that tomorrow or even tonight back on replay. They had three guys, and Ed Scorn just turned up field and put his head down and ran right through them. And they, they had him for a two-yard loss, but let him run right through for three yards. Good individual effort by Ed Scorn. Again, great. Tandem up front as well. So as they work from the gun, three to the left, and the pass is going to go that way. Caught by Amari Wash. He's going to dance outside the numbers and down the sideline. Though he's dragged out of bounds on the Titan boundary. Jordan Metzger got over there. Another first down for the Bulldogs. You know, I, I'm just impressed of how quickly he gets going. It only takes him a couple steps, and he's in full full speed and you know that's something I've never was gifted in it usually takes me 50 yards to get going but that young man he can get he can get scooting in about two steps so from the 35 again this was a drive that started inside the 15 thanks to that great punt by Connor Kitchen not a whole lot of home run plays so far from Elida they've had the football a long time today as Wash takes the and around, and he'll be stopped for pretty much nothing. Kitchen on the stop. Nick Ellibrook was there on the edge. Did a heck of a job keeping his block, setting the edge. You know, the Titans, that was their big philosophy this week. That was, the, that was what they were talking about. We need to set the edge, set the edge, set the edge. Nick Ellibrook did a heck of a job there setting the edge and, and bringing that back to his buddies. Clock continues to roll here in quarter two on that structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard. As Magoo takes the snap and drops the throw, got a safety valve there in Etzcorn along to the right mm -hmm. sideline, and he almost had the football ripped away by Metzger, but those Double strong line. hands yeah. of Etzcorn keeps it secure, pushes ahead for a couple of yards. So you, we've seen the, the lower half at work, and there you see the, the hands getting it done. Yeah, good job by Metzger trying to rip that one away, maybe get a, another turnover for his defense, but Edscorn was just way too strong to have that one tucked away. Wasn't going to give it up that easy. Third down play for the Bulldogs. They're going to go four wide with Edscorn kind of at a wing back off the right side as Magoo throws, and it's there and nearly picked. And did he hold on? He did not. Great Vinny read. Brinkman about jumped the route. Yes, he did. He's seen that right away. He came from his uh, linebacker position and just came, shot the gap. And I think, uh, you know, I don't know if his effort in front of Etzcorn kind of maybe secured his vision a little bit and uh, made him miss that. But if Vinny wasn't there, that might have been that might have been a 10, 20 yard gain. Now, Alida will punt for the first time tonight. Logan Crow with the boot. It's gonna hit and be returned by Jordan Metzger. Outside the 30, near the sideline. He's ridden out at the 35. Taken back by Jordan Metzger. Good job by the Titan defense there on that last drive to 
You know, I think they gave up one first down, but or one or two first downs, and then they uh, dug deep and had a heck of a last three downs there. Defensively, they got a lot of individual efforts from some guys that, uh, you know, Nick Ellerbrook, I think last week he was hurt and he just came back last week. So he's trying to get maybe his sea legs back, so to speak. And he, he made himself a couple good plays in that drive. So things are starting to look up for the Titan defense. Now they just need their friends on the offensive side to put some yardage together here. Evers on the carry. And as the defense doing its work, you look at the really the way the game has flowed back and forth so far, Scott. It does not look like a 9 nothing football game, but that is indeed what we have. Right, absolutely. And, you know, the Titans got behind the eight ball there, giving up that, that safety. And Wash had a big, big 20-yard run. They, uh, Ed Scorn had a couple gashes. And then next thing you know, it's a one-yard run in there. But other than that, the Titans have kind of uh, got their sea legs and, Got everything straightened out. They just now they just need to get offense, something going, something positive here for the Titans on offense. Still looking for their first first down, and here's a good throw down the sideline, and it is incomplete. Looking for Dane Dooling, but a flag yeah. came in late. Very good protection in front of Kuhlman. And a little yeah. too tight a coverage for Elida. At least that's the look at it right now. Yeah, both receivers are kind of jostling, and the receiver and the defensive back were kind of both jostling there, but normally it goes to the offense there. Just what the doctor ordered for the Titans to get, you know, some yardage here. Unfortunately uh, for them, it's on the penalty, but at least they'll take it nonetheless, some positive yardage. Move out of Landorf via penalty across midfield. The Citizens National Bank first down for the Titans at 7.30 to go in the second. And early snap. Yeah, that, that, and it, yeah that, looked, that looked like trouble right from the start. You had one lineman moving, at least one lineman ready for it, and even the tailback Evers didn't seem prepared for it. Yeah, and, and especially as, as they've been getting manhandled up front. Or controlled, I, maybe not manhandled, I guess, wrong word to use there. But they've been getting controlled. They, Elida's been controlling the line of scrimmage, at least the defensive line of scrimmage. For sure, the Titans just haven't had to be able to move those big guys up front to get some holes. And, you know, Kuman's trying to run around and find an open receiver, but he's unable to do that. And if you snap it early, it makes it even harder. Nice. There's a slant in the direction of Jordan Metzger. He secures it. Number two target on the team early in the season. Puts him over 100 yards on the year. That'll be close to a first down, and our referee first down, points in the direction of another Citizens National Bank. First down for Ottawa Glandor. First one they've earned on offense outside of the penalty. If you are a Titan fan, you know, that Kuman looked very poised and confident on that throw, but one of the first times all night that he was comfortable in the pocket, stood back there, set his feet, and made a strike right to the receiver. Gives it to Evers. They'll push the pile for three. You know, we're talking about a lot of firsts tonight, but that was the first time I think the Titans also had a little push there from the offensive lineman to get down the field. I mean, Evers didn't get hit until he was three, four yards down the field, and that has not happened normally tonight. He's been getting hit in the backfield. Titans maybe got something here, figured something out. Yep. See a couple of plays go your way. You yeah. got some juice. And here's the second down play. Coleman to throw, has it complete to Grant Schrader, but he's dropped right away by Amari Wash. A couple of yards shy of the marker. Coleman had a little bit of zip on that. And, you know, in case if he didn't, if he threw that one soft, that was going to get picked because the defensive back was right there and he kind of threw it right before he got there. Good job by Coleman. He set his feet and let that one fire. Getting a little bit of confidence on this drive. Third and a yard for the Titans at the 30. Kind of amazing when uh, things go your yeah. way, how much more confidence and how much better you play, right? Big power eye, and it's a play action. Heavy pursuit. Coleman going for it Probably all. Incomplete to Dane Dooling, but yeah. heavy pressure off the edge. Sam Maddox and Jackson Colvault got in the backfield for Elida, fourth and one, but 
feels like four down territory oh, here yeah. for OG. I would think since they passed, this meant that means that they're going for it. He had dueling. He just didn't have time to get to him. If he could have set his feet, that was a touchdown. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of Dane Dooling because everyone went to the full house backfield. Titans are notorious for this three full house, and everybody jumps for these linemen. And Schreiner calls a timeout knowing how crucial this play yep. is here. And they are going to want that Metzger Financial Services timeout to discuss things. Metzger Financial Services helping you plan for your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll be right back for more from Elida. Web Insurance Agency brings you tonight's instant replay, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Fourth and one for the OG Titans and a oh. fumbled snap. Coleman falls on top of it, but that's going to give it back to the Bulldogs on downs. Worst nightmare for the Titans to have the quarterback fumble the ball, then even give himself an opportunity try to get that first down. It's kind of the way the season's been for the Titans. You know, three or four things go your way, and then all of a sudden you have a miscue or you go backwards, and and then it just takes the wind out of the sails. If you're, you know, if you've been watching the Titans, that's kind of been their M.O. all year. Had some momentum, as yeah. you said. And, and the fire extinguisher on that one. 5.04 before the half, and Wash takes it around the right side on the give from Magoo. Advances to the 36. And Elida continues to work outside, a little bit inside. Second down, five. Got some quick hit passes going. We're seeing plenty of variety with some success here early. But they'd like to have more than just 9 nothing to show for it at this point. Big drive for the Elida offense. Ed Scorn takes it right behind center. Vinny Brinkman there and Alec Schrader. Along with Austin Haley there to clog up that middle. Good job by Austin Haley to keep in his gap and set the gap. And Ed Scorn came right to him and he made the tackle. Third down four at the Third down on the way now. And boy, four receivers again. And Magoo, a quick throw to the right, in and out of the hands of Keaton Hockey. Fourth down for the Bulldogs. Dean Dooling was right there, and so was Vinny Brinkman. Uh, he had a couple hands in that line of sight of that pass, so. Titans defense holds strong there. Gonna have a light up yeah. punt the ball back to him again. Back deep, Grant Evers, Jordan Metzger. Evers and Metzger will return. Logan Crow in punt formation. Kind of what offense wanted, right? Get the ball back. You, you kind of stub your toe there, and uh, defense does a good job of getting going three and out and get the ball right back for you to see if you can parlay another drive. Another high spiraling punt inside the 20. And Slipping down to his knees. Grant Evers. Grant Evers slips down at the 19-yard line. First down of Titans. A few, you get a little bit of green in front of him there. He's not the only one that slipped down there on this end. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's how uh, much rain they got down here, but it might be a little bit slick down there. I know Edscorn slipped a couple times. Wash slipped. Might be a little slipper yep. down on this end. Could very well be the pretty decent moisture the last couple of days leading up to this game. And you can see an all natural grass surface here at Elida. One of now a, just a remaining few in the WBL as Coleman's pass picked off in the middle of the field by David Edscorn, and that evens up the turnover battle. The four-minute mark, and Elida with 
Brilliant build position at the 25 going on in. Good read by Edgecorn. He was just baiting him to throw that little uh, seam route that the Titans kind of got him a couple times, and Edgecorn said, uh, not this time. I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to pick this one off. Good read by him. That, that was impressive from his safety position. Almost looked like he was nearly unaccounted for yeah. on the Web Insurance replay. And now he'll line up in the backfield next to quarterback Ryan Magoo. It's the give right back to Elkhorn <coughs> off the right Walker end. Here. They'll rumble down ahead after a short gain of two. Another thing that I'm impressed with Edscorn is it, it, he doesn't go down on the first contact. It'd take the second, third. He's always turning his legs, turning his legs. That's why you can see why he averages six yards because it's yep. hard to take him down second on down first eight, contact. He's usually carrying guys with him or, you know, keep turning his legs, getting out at one, two extra yards because he doesn't give up when he gets hit. One, I mean, that a two-score lead and a lot of looking to add to it as Magoo. Out to Wash, and he's got space. Can he break that seam? He nearly did. And a what is arguably a touchdown a saving stop on the edge for Ottawa Glandorf. Look, that was, uh, was Grant Schrader on yeah. the edge. Yeah, it was. He was holding on there. He, he, uh, Wash was trying to run through the tackle, but good job by Grant Schrader to hold on and get him down. It was pretty close to uh, the, the receiver was blocking before the – pass was in the air, so we're lucky that that wasn't a penalty. Puts the Bulldogs inside the Dales Concrete Red Zone. Dales Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. Also, Citizens National Bank first down as that score nowhere to run. Hit immediately after the handoff. Job by Dane Doolin coming Dane from his defense's end, defensive end position and, and got him down. Kind of, you know, made me look like I don't know what he's talking about because uh, he hit him and he yeah. went right down. Yep. Uh, the other 10, 15 times before tonight, he's been running through those ty types of tackles. Good Only job by Dane to get him down on the ground. 2.20 before the halftime break. Snap to Magoo. Looking right, now he's going to tuck it and run. Looking for that left pylon, and he's cut down inside the five. Griffin Seamit got over there. Tackle by Griffin Simon. Yeah, good job by Griffin to come, and he closed from his safety position to go and knock him down because from our vantage point, it looked like he had a, a clear path to the end zone, and Griffin kind of shot out of a can and came from nowhere and get him down on the ground. Touchdown saving tackle by Griffin. Third and goal to go for Elida. As we standing at 2.05. I would bet this play goes to number three. Oh, and and another wrong. quarterback keeper for Magoo. They're going to try to push the pile near the, the goal line. About the half foot line, yep. I believe, half yard line. Well, that's where forward progress stopped, but. Yeah, it might have been a two-down call right there yeah. for the Bulldogs. The Goo's probably thinking, well, I think I should hand this off to Edscorn because he handles this a little bit better than I do. <laughs> he didn't look too happy yep. getting out of that pile because I don't know. Those big guys underneath there were uh, pounding him. Titans call timeout. They do with 134 to play before halftime. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll be back for more on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Minute 34 before halftime, and it's 9-0 Elida on a fourth down and goal at the doorstep. Magoo under center, and we got a whistle before the play can be run. Timeout Elida. Elida. Now, maybe didn't like the play call from the OG defense. Good job by the coaches. Kind of like we got a little chess match going here. Yep, this is a meaningful play here right before the halftime break. Elida does get the football to start half number two, but head coach Kyle Harmon and 
his offense. Wants to go over things shortly and been to shore this one up. Coach Harmon in his fourth year at the helm of the Bulldogs. He's kind of pacing down there. I don't know, maybe the other coaches up here in the box are maybe telling him maybe kick it, kick it, or they're yep. maybe, seems to me that they're kind of uh, not sure what play. I don't know if they're all on the same page here. and Just looking for the right look. Yes. Because as you mentioned, I agree with you is this is a very, there. this is crucial, I think. You know, it gets 15, maybe 16, and, and, you know, maybe the Titans will go away because that quarter, they battled them pretty hard there that yep. quarter. Ottawa Landorf left a fourth down in one earlier in the quarter. And this is at scoring around the right side. Got what he needed, and he's in for the second time today. His second rushing touchdown. It took some back and forth, but the Bulldogs eventually punch it in with a minute 29 to go before half. Yeah, what, what, what smart coaches. Hey, let's run behind Parker Krim, and uh, he'll get us into the end zone. I mean, he, he blew his guy up. He was two yards into the end zone, and they just went right behind him. The Lee's famous recipe chicken touchdown, and here goes the Fat Jacks Pizza extra point. Right through the uprights, and it's 16 0. Elida take the timeout and return for the kickoff. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Lee's famous recipe chicken at Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Home Style happens here. And tonight's extra point sponsor is Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. Second score of the day. Touchdown variety for Alina. They have a blocked punt for safety and a couple of one yard David Etzcorn touchdown runs. Here's the return on the kick for Jordan Metzger, and he advances to the 27. And a minute 24 is what OG has before the half to work with. They've moved the ball a little well as the half has gone on, Scott, but now they're kind of in less than the two-minute drill. It's a little bit more hurried than that, isn't it? Yeah, and you, you don't want to turn the ball over either, so you're, it's like catch-22. Do you want to take some shots? Or, you know, your quarterback's just coming off an interception. Uh, you got to run some safe plays, but you really don't have time to run those safe plays. So we'll Ed, see what the Titans draw up here. Uh, Edscorn had the interception on the last drive. And this is a run up the gut. One of the best runs of the day for Ottawa Glandorf. It's Alex Schrader. That'll be a, enough for a Citizens National Bank first down, a pickup of 11. Bulldogs make a sub on the defensive side. It might have been a singer for Maddox there. He was kind of holding his shoulder and arm. It kind of was tingling, looked like. Schrader ahead again for a couple more. Titans are content to use the running game. Kevin Here to try to set up some a little better percentage passes. Yeah, and Coach Schreiner understands you don't want, you know, the coat you're coming off your quarterback throwing an interception. You want to keep keep the things positive going into halftime. You don't want to give them another shot at another score. Nice safe pass. Complete and a first down to Grant Schrader. That's enough for a Citizens National Bank first down, and that should be enough to stop the clock as well, but the Titans want to take the T.O. They have one left. Can't take those with you after the break. So we're going to talk it over. So will we as we step out on the Metzger's Financial Services timeout, watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. 16-0 Olinda over Ottawa Glandorf. Western Buckeye League football on a Friday night. Heavy pressure from Krem, and he gets the quarterback Coleman down on the opposite end of the 40. 
That's a couple times tonight. Krim has just gotten a ton of pressure. He's yeah. blocked a punt that led to the safety. He got in there. I think he forced a fumble earlier. Kind of stunned it on that, and they kind of lost him, and he had free reign right to the quarterback, and I don't think the Titans are even going to attempt to snap this. They're going to go to halftime. Recollect here after the first two quarters. Bulldogs pitching a shutout so far, 16-0 as we hit halftime at Elida. We'll take a timeout and return with our halftime adjustments. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. It is halftime from Elida. Time to make adjustments in the locker room for the Titans and Bulldogs. We'll make some up here as well. Our halftime adjustment sponsor is the State Bank. Visit your statebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. The State Bank bringing communities together with food and fellowship with our State Bank's Gives program. For additional dates and information, visit the State Bank Facebook page. Garrett Bantuit along with Scott Mag here this evening as the OG band takes the field. Scott looking at Ottawa Glandorf down 16 to nothing. You've had a turnover, you've had drives that needed finish, but what really stood out to you to adjust for the next two quarters? Uh, well, I, I think first of all, uh, Titans have to get something on the scoreboard. It's been six full quarters uh, since they scored and almost seven because if I believe the last time they scored was early in the fourth quarter against Kenton and then they made a few mistakes and the floodgates opened and they end up losing that one and then uh, I, I said earlier on the broadcast that they've been in, in all three games. Uh, I was wrong about the Walpaw game. They weren't in it. Um, so they haven't scored in six quarters. They just need to get something positive on the scoreboard, right? It could be a safety. It could be uh, a field goal could be a touchdown. They just need to get off the snide. I, I think they're pressuring themselves a little bit on offense. They need to just kind of relax a little bit and get going. The, the big guys kind of late in that second quarter started to open up some running lanes. And I think, they, you know, we said at the beginning of the game they got to be able to run to pass and pass to run. I think they got the passing game going, but they just haven't been able to get – the running game going enough to scare Elida to load the box so now that passing lanes will get a little bit. I think they're setting back knowing that Titans are going to pass and that allows Krim to pin his ear back and he just comes flying to the quarterback and uh, I feel bad for Peyton. He's got a couple seconds and he's got to get rid of the ball but you know they have to be they have to get the running game going to help set up that pass. Meanwhile on the Elida side they have had a couple penalties a turnover, you know, they, they've had their own fair share of things to clean up. What stood, stuck out to you? Well, I, I think, first of all, they got to keep controlling the line of scrimmage. I think they've done a heck of a job this game, defensive line of scrimmage. They've they've owned the line of scrimmage offensively early in that first hat, first quarter. They controlled the offensive uh, line of scrimmage, not so much in that second quarter. The Titans didn't make some good adjustments. But uh, it seems to me also they got up nine nothing and they just kind of like quit. They didn't, they weren't playing with the same aggressiveness, the same you know urgency, so to speak. So I think they got to come back with that same fire that they had early in that first quarter and keep it the whole third and fourth quarter. You know the Titans, a couple scores and they're right back in this game. They can't let up. They can't take the foot off the gas. They got to keep going. And last but not least, you know how do you let a team back in? You give up big plays. I think Elida cannot give up any big plays here in this second half because they give up some big plays. Titans get right back in it really quick. So, you know, stay the course, no big plays, and maybe come with a little bit more fire in the, in the second half. I think they had it early, and then they kind of like took the foot off the gas and just kind of going through the motions for a little bit. Allow the Titans to kind of sway the momentum a little bit. If Titans didn't fumble there, you know, it might have been 9-7, 9-3, and we got a different ball game. Yeah, absolutely right. There's your State Bank halftime adjustments. Third quarter coming your way next. 16 0 Elida over Ottawa Glandorf on WOSN.
Third quarter action from a line of 16 nothing on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Third quarter brought to you by TD Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TD Interiors on Allentown Road. Garrett Mansfield alongside Scott Mag. And the Titans will have to kick off to give it back to the team with the upper hand. Ottawa Glandorf's defense, though, tonight, Scott, has really been a crucial piece to keeping the score right where it is. Yeah, and, and you know, you look at the scoreboard, and like you said, 16-0, but what I heard earlier, first downs, Elida six on the night so far, OG with five. So if you if you just heard tuned into that, you'd think the score would be 0-0, zero, zero, but uh, a couple breaks here and and then Elida is up 16 to 0 a couple turnovers a couple miscues and that's the difference of this game right now a little bit of the game flow tonight the Titans got the ball first had a three and out punt blocked out the back of the end zone for a safety put Elida on the board 2 to 0 then the Bulldogs with a long drive down the field capped off on a 1 yard David Etzkorn touchdown run. And then the Bulldog offense kind of went quiet after that. And these two teams exchanged blows, exchanged some turnovers. And then a Etzkorn interception deep in OG territory sent up another score from a yard out by the young man. And 16 to zero is where we stand. Second down play after the Etzkorn first down run. Gain of five, pushing that pile. As we mentioned in the first half, he, he doesn't go down easy. Those legs are always churning. Gets the give here, bursts it outside, tried to cut it back, but he's dropped by Alex Schrader. Good job by Grant Evers to not let him get outside by him, and therefore he had to slow down and cut back and allows the pursuit to come and knock him and get him to the ground. You know, it's, it sounds so easy, doesn't it, right? Yep. Don't let him get outside. Don't let him get outside. Beat him to the spot. Turn him back into your friends. Titans, uh, after that first drive, have done a great job at that for the majority of this game. It just uh, They just kind of start a little slow. And Third down, a big third down early for Ottawa Glandorf. And false start up front. At the guard position, you think about it here, if you're Ottawa Glandorf, you get a stop, you get the football back, go down the field and score, two-point conversion, you can cut this lead in right. half pretty quick. Right, right, you're, you're two scores and two two-point conversions away of tying this one up, so the Titans ain't out of it, and, and you know, if, you, if, if my statistician is correct, it's unofficial, but only six first downs for Elon and five for the Titans, so it's really is not like they are like manhandling them on offense yep. either. It's just Titans just need to get something positive and get something on the scoreboard to just get the offense going. Nine yards to a first down for Ottawa Glendorf, or for uh, Elida, excuse me, as Magoo drops and he unloads down the middle of the field and over oh, the shoulder catch over midfield, hauled in by Seth Sharp to move the chains. Bye, Mike. My town, I think that's the first time they took a shot, right? But normally yep. it's been like quick hitches, uh, a little bit of jet sweeps, trying to get um, their speed on the outside and trying to get wash going. But that's the first time they took something deep and uh, come away with something good. Maybe trying to take the air out of the Titans defense. They've been stacking that box pretty, pretty tight. Longest play from scrimmage for either team tonight. That was good for nearly 60 yards. Couldn't see if that was. Four, a, excuse me, 40. Yeah, I couldn't see if that was a double move out there by Colvert. But I know Wash was coming out here in the flat and did a kind of out and up. And he was pretty well. They, they floated all the coverage to him, left the single coverage on the backside. This is the give to Amari Wash. Ahead for a couple off the left side of the line. Third and short on the way for the Bulldogs. Yeah. 
Austin Haley come in from his uh, defensive line position as uh, Vinnie Brinkman was there, and I think as well as Dane Dooley. Not letting Wash to get outside, which is a good thing because he can get going in a hurry. Almost waiting for that when and not the if for his running ability on the edges. But this time the quarterback, Ryan Magoo, takes it to the left end inside the 30 for a fresh set of downs brought to you by Citizens National Bank. To the 25 now for Elida. Simon kind of hobbled off. I don't. I hope it's a cramp. It looks like he's over there on the sideline. Yeah, it looks like Jess Michael, the longtime Titan trainer, is over there stretching his calf. He kind of made that tackle, and he kind of got up and a little hitch in his giddy up as he was walking off there. Now they'll roll the clock back. And they give. Dead scorn. And he continues to rack up the yardage and get to the end, or get right to the edge of the Dales Concrete Red Zone. Yeah, and you know, I kind of comment on the previous play. They've they've only ran Magoo a few times tonight, but it seems like uh, when they have ran him, it's been in some crucial crucial downs, and he's picked up some uh, much needed yardage for the Bulldogs. Elida has been able to eat some time off of this opening drive as this is Wash. Dashes towards the sideline. See if this is close to a first down there. The spot actually yeah. didn't, wasn't favorable to the Bulldogs, so <laughs> back him up a couple of yards. I would thought that was about going to be at the 15, yep. but now they moved it back to the 17. So third and two now for Elida. There's another Magoo run. He gets a good block from Ed Scorn off the right side. He has a first down brought to you by Citizens National Bank. Vinny Brinkman just was a step slow. He, he read that perfectly. He just couldn't quite get there. Again, that Magoo just, just does enough, right, he, as a quarterback. Yep. and. He got four or five yards. He's just doing enough. He's not like he's running past anybody. He's just he's making himself a runner, and he's he's getting positive yards, picking up these first well-earned first downs, hard-earned first down for the Bulldogs. Made that nice 60-yard pass. He's put himself a pretty good drive here. A big pass on a, a third down conversion over the middle, kept the drive going, and... That looked like the play clock was running short on Elida, so they'll take a timeout. Brought to you by Metzger, Metzger Financial Services. We'll take the break as well. 7-10 left in this third period here on WOSN. Tonight's timeout sponsors. Brought to you by or sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. First down in 10 from the 12 for Elida. There goes an Amari Wash give to the right. And he's halted just inside the 10. Had a couple of Titans around his ankles. Yeah, that scares me when a guy's hopping around like that because you know one of those big guys are going to come and just going to lay the wood to you. And smart for him, he kind of ducked and didn't take the brunt of that hit that was coming. Smarter man than I. 16-0 will light on that structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard. But they're marching in there ever so patiently. Trying to tack on some more. And off of contact, Edscorn breaks it outside, headed for the pylon, stretches out the football. Did he get there? See what that far line judge says. They're going to mark him just shy of the goal line. Third, or excuse me, that's going to be enough for a first down. First and goal 
First set of downs from Citizens National Bank. Titans had him. They had two guys just didn't able to get him down to the ground. They read it perfectly. Looked like uh, Austin Haley was right there and somebody else. I didn't catch the number, but he just bounced it offside. And, you know, he's just so hard to get down. He just keeps turning his legs, turning his name, bumped it outside and got all the way down to about the one yard line. Already two rushing scores from a yard out. There's another one handed off to Ed Scorn. Pushing the pile. The Elida sideline thinks he's in. What did the line judge think? Touchdown. It's touchdown, Elida. For the third time today, in for the Lee's famous recipe chicken touchdown score. So he's just so tough at the short yardage. So hard. He gets so low. He's got such strong legs. He just runs right through people. Ed Scorn now three touchdowns on the ground and an interception on defense. And the Fat Jacks point after, punched on through by Ethan Ramsdale. And it's 23 to nothing in favor of the Elida Bulldogs. 6-10 to go in the quarter. Timeout taken here in the third. We'll be back with more after this. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Homestyle happens here, bringing you touchdown sponsors of the night. And Fat Jack's Pizza is your point after sponsor. Get to Fat Jack's Pizza before or after the game and enjoy their delicious pizza, fun games, and ice cold drinks. 23 0 is the score. Three at score touchdown runs. And a safety early in the game for Elida. That's their tally on the board. And Ottawa Glandorf desperately needing points. And Elida, though, they kind of killed two birds with one stone there, Scott. They got a yep. score, and they knocked down about half of the third quarter clock. Yeah, they did. They took a lot of time. And, you know, that's uh, that's game killers when an offense can stay on the on the field for six, seven minutes that chews up the clock and doesn't leave the opponent any chance of getting back in this game. That was just what the doctor ordered for the Elida Bulldogs. Here is the Ottawa Glandorf offense. Peyton Coleman breaks the huddle. Hadn't said so much tonight, but I think this is a very, very important drive here for the Titans. They got to get, at, nonetheless, flip the field or maybe try to get some points in here. Time's of the essence here. And there's a big push from Parker Krim off the defensive edge for a line of the push of the ball carrier. Vinny Brinkman back. And a loss on first down. And they're going to give him forward progress basically back to the line. So that Ottawa Glendorf huddle can take a couple of extra yards back in the positive direction. I tell you, I, I just think. Number 79, Kevin McGuire has done such a good job tonight. He, he is like an immovable force there right in the middle, and Titans have not been able to run the ball up the middle tonight. There's a sling to the outside right. Caught by Jordan Metzger, and he's able to slip through almost all the way through the secondary and get a Citizens National Bank first down and across midfield. That's a big electric play that yeah, the Titans tight. have been searching for. Right, and and we kind of talked about our keys at halftime to say, no, give up the big play. That one, if he had kept his feet, that might have been the big play of the Titans, the, just what the doctor ordered for the Titans. Good job by Metzger to run through that tackle. So back at the line, Kuhlman off to the right again. Kuhlman's pass complete. I believe went right back to Metzger. Just a couple of yards on the gain. Positive yards nonetheless. Good job, yep. good pursuit by the Bulldogs to get there. And just short passes, they'll give up those two, three yard passes. They just don't want to give up the 10, 15, 20 yard pass plays. What that two, three yards does, keeps the clock moving and makes more time for them to get down the field. They're going to give it 
to Brinkman. Yeah, just, just tough sledding up that middle. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of size on that defensive front, as you mentioned, Scotty. Yeah, McGuire at 6'2", 235. Titus Daly at 5'9", 265. We mentioned Parker Grimm, 6'3", 235. What that also does is allows those linebackers to fro flow freely, right? They don't, they don't get the offensive linemen. They can't get off their blocks. They can't go hit them. That now they can just pin their ear backs and fire a hole, and the Titans just can't run because those linebackers are where they're in their alleys all night. Coleman has to scramble, stays on his feet, and he's chased out of bounds for no if, gain. Yeah, I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage or not, but it's close. Good athletic, yeah, good athletic play by him to try to make something positive. I, I tell you, that's impressive that he didn't fall to the turf there when he slid. Now the Titans will have to punt it away. They've taken the good with the bad on the putt team tonight. One of them blocked for his safety. and Connor Kitchen has also boomed a couple of them inside the 20. This one is away and spirals towards the sideline. Looks like that'll be north of the 20-yard line, but Elida will get it back. 336 is what remains in quarter number three. Bulldogs 23 and the Titans zero. See what Elida has here. You can kind of go for the jungler at this point of the football game, the way it has flowed right now. You're already up three scores. Yeah, another seven, eight minute drive here and points. It might be all she wrote yep. for the Titans. So Ryan Magoo back. So he's lined up in the pistol. Snap in the give. Running right side. Cameron Kaufman, the ball carrier. Second time he's had his hands on the football tonight. He had an early carry in the football game. A little bit of more of a change of pace back compared to Wash and Etzcorn. But what that does keeps the clock moving. He doesn't go out of bounds. It's positive yardage. Keeps the clock running. That's the that's what Elida is. You know, it's the Titans' enemy here, and, and Elida's just kind of like slow playing this, no hurry to snap the ball. Got the play in with 30 seconds left to go, and it's still 10 seconds, and no hurry to, to snap it yet even. A bubble screen, it's a wash in the flat to the left, yeah. bounces off a one. Yeah. And the job is finished near the 36. Well, you can see from the scoreboard, Elida's League leading defense done its job tonight. And we have a player down. We'll take a timeout. 2.36 to go in quarter three. Bulldogs with the lead in the football on WOSN. John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And web insurance agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Looking like a cramping yep. Titan helped off the field. Yeah, you, know, you know, this is kind of what high school athletics is all about. You know, uh, first man on the play to help him was not one of his teammates. It was number 75, Travis Atkins, just because he was the closest and he helped Nick stretch out that cramp. I mean, that's what high school sports is, teamwork or uh, sportsmanship and camaraderie. Both those guys know what it's like to have a cramp and he went there to help a guy a fellow football player in, in need. That's just so awesome to see. That's what makes sports so great in this neck of the woods. And you see that, and, and really, Scott, kind of, that starts with the culture set by the head coaches. Coach Schreiner has been doing it for a long time, and Coach Harmon at Elida, one of the younger up-and-coming coaches and very well respected around this league, and he has certainly set that culture here at Elida, too. Big booming punts after a third down stop of the Titans. And yet the Elida defense back on the field. We mentioned before going to our last break, they're the top ranked scoring defense in the Western Buckeye League. But 
tonight we can see it's not all credit to the the, the defensive unit itself because the offense has done a good job of making sure that defense is rested, yes. taking their time on the offensive side and limiting that time between snaps. Absolutely, and no, no, that there's a lot of guys that play both ways on both teams, but you know, there's a few that play only one way, and I'm sure they sure do appreciate that extra time on the sidelines so they can rest and get some water and stay hydrated. There's the give on first down. Brinkman sheds a tackler and gets a couple extra yard burst to the 44. That should be a Citizens National Bank first down for the OG Titans with 90 seconds left in the third. Yeah, you know, the, heard it a lot last weekend at the college game, and especially during the Buckeyes game. They talk about the Buckeyes. They use, they work on that jump cut. Right, Vinny did that. He jumped cut around a guy and got past it. So it's kind of the new new wave for running backs, a new move. It used to be kind of the fake right go left. Now it's that jump cut to get past. And Vinny did an awesome job getting out there and getting around somebody. Ooh, he might have wanted Completed maybe pass. a clip there. And they got it. Metzger snuck around the corner, but looked like the blocker on the edge might have held on a little too long or at least been out of position. And that's going to yeah. be the call. I think that's the first penalty on Ottawa Glandorf tonight. I believe so. You know, blocking him back for the Titans. And that'll wipe out a six yard pickup. Yeah. Final minute of this third quarter. Thrown by the uh, referee from way back there. I'm impressed with how far he threw that flag. Yeah, that, he got it on that, target. Nonetheless, that was more impressive than the play call from him seeing it back there. He threw that probably a good 25 yards. I think they have training camp for that kind of stuff. I don't know. You would think they have to practice it because you don't just go and just start winging it. I don't know. Between that and oh. the, the, the beanie you have to throw yeah, for punt right. returns. I mean, there, there's a lot happening off of that belt. You got to make sure you're uh, – Grabbing the right thing, too. Your, your hand signal. Yeah. Marker is correct. Yeah. There's Seth, more to it. Yeah, Seth Sharp came from flying in from his safety position. Uh, basically, no threat of the passer coming up and read and run, and he's coming filling a hole. And a good job by uh, Vinny to sidestep and get through him. And Sharp was not happy with himself, but he came and filled that hole in a hurry from his safety. Good read by that young man. 10 seconds on the clock at the snap. Kuhlman will dump off to Dane Dooling. He's able to get back to the original line of scrimmage, third down and 10, but we'll have to pick that one up at the end of the quarter break. Three in the books down here at Elida. Four fingers go in the air along the Bulldog sideline. They're leading 23-0 here at home on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard between Elida and Ottawa Glandorf is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And also, Citizens National Bank is your first down sponsor tonight. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Titan football third and 10 to start the fourth quarter from their own 45 yard line. Peyton Kuhlman drops the throw over the middle, and it's picked off. Second time tonight, the Bulldogs have taken the football out of the air, that time by Keaton Hockey, and returned to the 25. Looks like the uh, Bulldogs were in some sort of zone, and he was just sitting there waiting, waiting for the pass, and he just kind of did a little shuffle and stepped right in front and got that screen, or got that pass. Good defensive call, and Good coaching to be where you're supposed to be. 11.52, so first play of that quarter goes the other direction. Similar to the score in the second quarter for Elida turning defense into offense. Yeah. Here's the give to Etzcorn, running left side. And he's gonna push the pile. And they got a, they got a flag. This 
boundary officials coming in, and he's he blown his whistle. Flag one early. Yeah, they're gonna call it a false start, so that's gonna wipe out that play completely. Yep. We've had relatively a very clean game tonight, Scott. Not a whole lot of penalties. Right. You are correct. Uh, clean as in far as penalties, but a few, you know, five, four or five turnovers, I think, and a couple of miscues. But as far as they're playing clean, and it's also a very uh, well officiated game. Yep. I mean, I'm, they're letting them play, and they're calling the obvious ones, and. You know, it's, uh, it's great when you don't notice an official, and I really haven't noticed any of these officials out there tonight. Big use pass, incomplete. Jackson Colvault was there, but I don't know if he was the intended target. It yeah. looked like that was in the direction of Seth Sharp behind him. Right, there was two guys in the same spot. Somebody ran the wrong route, and I don't know if, if that was designed to be three yards away from each other. Yep. He almost made a one-handed catch, too. That was also <laughs> impressive. Almost, I'll tell you what, technology with these gloves now, you can almost stick right, right to them, but you still got to have the strength in your hand to bring it in. Second down for the Bulldogs from the 32. Head scoring around left side. He's going to get some of that yardage back. Scoots out of bounds at the 23. Grant Simon didn't make the tackle, but at least he popped him outside. And the only way he can get around him was to go out of bounds. So, still got eight. He could have. He could have been much worse because he had a lot of green grass in front of him out there. Chunk play to make this third down a little bit easier on the play call. Magoo in the backfield by himself, fakes the handoff, gets a good block, and look at that patient yeah. read. Dimes ahead to the 15, and that is what's going to make the difference to turn it into a Citizens National Bank first down inside the Dales concrete red zone. Right. It, it, you know, we said, we've said we said this over and over. He's not anything flashy, but he just does enough, right? He sidestepped. He waited. He was patient. You know, he's just doing enough at the quarterback position, and, you know, when a guy is 60 yards down the field, you hit him. You know, he, he's played himself a heck of a game tonight. A patient run indeed. First down. And this one goes to Edscorn. Open space to the right. Can he beat this man to the edge? And he does. He's into the end zone from 15 yards away. David Edscorn, he had four touchdowns entering tonight's game through the first three weeks. He has four rushing scores on the ground tonight. Yeah, he just seen pay dirt, and he put in another gear. To, he ran through the arm tackle, and he seen uh, the end zone. I'll tell you, that guy sniffs the end zone. He's pretty tough to keep him out of there, as we as, as you just mentioned. Four touchdowns tonight. It's impressive. What a game. Ethan Ramsdale will line it up to kick. Snaps down. Boot is up. And that baby is through. After the Lee's famous chicken touchdown, and the Fat Jacks. PAT. Take our time out here at 11.20 to go in quarter four from Elida on WOSN. Coming off of Elida, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Touchdown. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call them for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And at point after, thanks to uh, Fat Jack's Pizza. Get to Fat Jack's before and after the game. Enjoy the delicious pizza. Fun games and ice cold drinks. Bobbick Landorf on the kickoff. Pretty good return out beyond the 30. <coughs> Jordan well Metzger was kind of slithering his way down there, sidestepping and getting all the way up to the 32. Yeah, with the competitive balance rules at a 30-point lead in the second half. Going to run this clock on that structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard. 30 to nothing is again the advantage. Yeah, we're kind of talking off air that, you know, me personally, I like it because teams can't run up the score. But in, in the other respect, I don't like it because, you know, a lot of times when the game gets out of hand, they put some JV kids in and they practice just as hard as the varsity during the week. And, you know, they like to get into some Friday night games and, you know, get some experience because they're one injury away from playing. Yep. <laughs> It's one of those every every time you have a rule change such as that, and it goes from you know the playoff teams, how many teams make the postseason, to you know 
competitive balance rules. There's always there. There's always that drawback that might not be the most obvious. Yeah, and you know, I wonder if that hurts depth. You know, it would be something that you could do a maybe a research project or something on to find out from coaches if they think you know if that's hurting their depth because they don't get you know some Friday night stuff. I know there there is JV games and I know they get their time on the JV games, but it's it's different when the stands are packed. You're on a Friday night. You're under the lights. Yep. JV games are usually on Saturday mornings. Basically, moms and dads and maybe grandma and grandpas. There's not many people in the stands. You're maybe not as nervous. Just be interesting to see what the coaches take on that as well. I'm sure they they like it for the fact that. You know, you, there's not teams that are running up the score because you don't want to embarrass a team and win 80 to nothing. There's, no one wins on that. Even even the team that wins by 80, you don't get anything out of that. Third and short for OG. And they're going to get the first down on the back of Grant Evers. Evers on the carry. Citizens National Bank, fresh set of downs for the Titans. Second week in a row, the Titans have... Had zero on the board in the fourth quarter last week. A 45-0 loss to Wapakineta. And here they try to erase that. And the light is starting to sprinkle in some JV guys or some guys that, you know, maybe don't play as much varsity, getting in, get some reps. It's kind of good to see. Well, misdirection there for the Titans. Grant Schrader on the reception. He's going to get seven or eight. Upcoming ball games for these two programs next week. Week number five in high school football. Hard to believe nearly the, halfway already the yeah. halfway points of the regular season. St. Mary's at home for the OG Titans. I believe that's homecoming for the Titans if I'm not uh, mistaken there. Three of the first four on the road for OG. So very well could be. Yes, yeah, squeeze it in there somewhere. Yes, you do. <laughs> Here's the second down play. This time Coleman around the left side. He's going to have a first down for the Titans. That's one of Peyton's better reads. He basically pulled that out away of the belly of uh, RPO, run pass option there. He pulled that right away from the uh, everyone he went down, went with the running back. He pulled it out and took it outside and seen some daylight. Got about five, six yards. Good read by Peyton Kuhlman. On the Elida schedule, to continue that previous thought, three of the four, they've been at home, so they've gotten comfortable here on their own field. They will head across town to Bath next week. Coleman unloads down the left sideline, jumping ground for Schrader in and out of the hands inside the 10. Wash was step for step. I think Grant Schrader was more of defensive uh, player there than an uh, offensive player, but Wash had super tight coverage. He had the inside position. He ran he step for step with him. He, that's textbook. If you want to put a YouTube video together how to play defensive back cover and receiver, he, that was textbook right there. And the Bulldogs. All of that coming together, still with that zero on the board, and while you are mixing some guys in, you, Scott, as you mentioned, they, the guy's still in there. They want to finish the job they started here as Brinkman takes a carry. Gain about three or four there. <coughs> it's good to see, you know, Titans are still playing hard, down 30 to nothing. That's, that's good. There's no quitting them, and, you know, Coach Schreiner doesn't let that happen, which is a good thing. Carries over to his team. He's not going to stop coaching. Kids ain't going to stop playing. That, that, that's good to see. Um, Elida's still playing hard. They got, I would say, three-fourths of their starters in. They're just sprinkling in a few JV guys here and there. Got a reverse and a pass, pass in the air. And it is caught by Schrader at the 10. And he's going to scoot into the end zone to break up the shutout. <laughs> The pass came from Jordan Metzger off the reverse. And a big time score of 37 yards. Yeah. <laughs> like a double reverse pass. That was that was pretty impressive. What he also was impressive is uh, Metzger, the left-hander, threw a nice tight spiral to the receiver there. That was uh, pretty nice. 
That spoils what could have been Alida's first shutout since week one of last season. And a flag that has come out before the point after. So Lee's famous chicken touchdown for Ottawa Glandorf at the 524 mark. Calling a flag here, but the, I don't understand yep. what the official's substitution. legal substitution. Uh -huh. One of those when you do yeah. change out on the offensive yeah. side, you get a chance to equalize. So on the defensive end, you know, not sure where the, either they sent too many or too many off. Maybe too many guys broke the huddle. Maybe yep. something that might have been. I think that's a leak called yes, legal that, substitution that's right as well. Too. The extra point blown dead again. Another flag out. <coughs> and this time they're going to be offside. Yeah. Well, tell you what. They went from the two to the one, now to the half. Yep. Might be Titans might change their mind, go for yep. two. I think that's a good decision by are. Schreiner. You're at the half, half yard line, why not? A lot of subbing out some of their bigger guys in and some of the smaller guys back out to build that wall up there. So instead of a Fat Jacks extra point, OG going for two. Schreiner, full house backfield. It's going to be Evers to be the deep back. He takes it off the right guard, and he's yep. in. Two-point conversion. 30-8 to eight on that structure outdoor Ohio scoreboard. 524 left in the ball game. We'll look at it when we come back on WOSN. That touchdown for Ottawa Glandorf is a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken touchdown located in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here in Dale's Concrete. A red zone sponsor tonight called Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. And premier sponsor for the Atlanta Bulldogs, it comes courtesy of John Stocker DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. 30 to eight on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard, and Ottawa Glandorf still down a few scores, but looks like they have got the onside unit ready to go from the 40. Yeah, but nonetheless, what it does for the Titans is also allows them to build on some momentum, right? You got, you score, you got, you got uh, that monkey off your back of not being able to score some points. That's something to build on for next week if you don't come away with a victory tonight, but close to a flag there. Seth Sharp secured the football for Elida at the 49. <laughs> Bulldogs will take over on offense again. Well, either way of whether you're able to get that football back or not, if you're out of Glandorf, just another piece of experience of situational football for the year. I'm sure that that'll be something to draw on for games to come. You can practice that all you want, but right. being able to do it live and yep. At game speed. And you might, yeah, it might come to work sometime. Titans kind of confused. They got guys running all over the place. Now they got a. It's going to turn into a delay a game for Elida. Yeah, they, Titans were confused. They had several guys running from one side of the field to the other, guys coming in and out, and they just didn't know what to do. I, I'm surprised Elida just didn't quick snap and get, get the Titans discombobulated there. Here's the rush. David Edscorn gets the contact and stays on his feet. Already a four touchdown night. He's kind of been inching at the yardage throughout the evening. You know, 
might not pop the box score in terms of yardage or yards per carry, but his impact on the game has been immense as a pass catcher out of the backfield and also had an interception on defense. He's definitely been involved in every phase. As well as how hard he runs. Again, we've mentioned it several times. He's very hard to get down at the initial contact. That's not many uh, backs can say that. Yep. Second down and short. Here's the give to Kaufman. He's going to get pushed back. Titans uh, coming to life here, fans as well. Absolutely. Amazing what happens when something positive, we've mentioned it early. Uh, we said again how much better you play when things go your way, and Titans are kind of built on that momentum. Unfortunately for them, it's late in the fourth quarter, not in the first half. But something to build on for next week. And I, I, I'm pretty positive it's homecoming next week, so Titans will have a homecoming. Uh, build on. Third down play for the Bulldogs. Kaufman still in the backfield. And here's Magoo on the keeper, puts his head down. Did he have enough leverage to bull his way ahead? I think he did. Just enough, just enough to get that first down. Kind of patiently, patiently found himself his hole and stuck his head down and dove forward and got the first down. First down, Definitely will not be in any hurry to snap this football either. The clock continues to roll near three and a half to play. Light is going to keep Kaufman in the backfield as that scoring is done his job. He's got the hat still on on the sidelines though. Delay a game. And another delay a game penalty yeah. on this drive. It's going to be their second. Coach was not happy. He kind of stormed out there yep. like, get set so we can run the play. I didn't see who was trying to plead his case. I don't know, <clears throat> kind of arguing over there at the sideline. Hurry him get the play in. Hockey, I think. Bulldogs with scores in all four quarters. All from David Etzcorn. Did the fumble ball came out, I believe. I believe Kaufman lost the hold of the football. <laughs> this would be the second to light a turnover in the game if it's picked up by the Titans, and it is. It is. It's Ottawa Glandor football. <laughs> second to light a fumble that they've lost. Yes, OG the football with 3.02 to play in the game. Not quite how you might have wanted to finish this, right? He got a fumble, he gave up a touchdown. I, I think they uh, went back to their ones right now, I believe. Looks like, uh, looking out yep. there, looks like all the guys that were uh, started the game are right back in there. So they're trying to get that intensity back. 30 to eight ball game on the structure scoreboard. Evers ahead, and he just runs the, into a wall. Yeah. That big number 79, Kevin McGuire. You can hear that pads are cracking way up here. He uh, does a pretty go good job in the middle of that line of scrimmage. They don't, he just kind of doesn't get moved very well, and he, for a big man, he uh, did a pretty good job of filling that sp spot. He, he's got pretty light in his feet to go get the ball carrier. Final two and a half here at Elida. Kaufman to throw, heavy pressure, and he just goes down. See the penetration getting in there for Elida from Landon Crates. But they got three past the line of scrimmage. Yep. Got to drop out of Glandorf way back, third and very long. Looks like third and 17. At the 35. Not a whole lot of these kind of plays in the book. No. See what OG has in store. Maybe cut it down 
on but, the third down play, setting yeah. up for fourth. I, yeah, it's definitely two down territory, especially this late in the game. And it's a give to Alex Schrader. He's ahead nearly back to the original line of scrimmage to the 42. But with a minute 30, bring up fourth down for the Titans. Good to see Alec out there running hard. Tore his uh, ACL last football season and worked really, really hard during the winter and a lot of track. And he was able to come back and track late May, early May. Good to see he's a quality young man. Good to see him back on the football field. Down the tight break huddle. Minute 15 to go. Fourth and 10. As Peyton Kaufman drops back. Pressure on the way, he steps up. Got to run for it and fires it incomplete, but caught by Coach Harmon along the sideline. And he's going to give that right back to his offense, put him in victory formation, and the Bulldogs yep. will be 4-0. 59 seconds. Lina takes over at the 42 of Ottawa Glandorf. Some of those that want to get ahead of the traffic have already headed that direction. But a 30 to eight score currently, Elida. Probably have to snap it twice. Yep. David Ed scoring touchdowns of one yard in the first, second, and third, then a 15 yard dash in the fourth. OG on a gadget play late in the fourth. Got their lone score of the game and a two point conversion. Elida started it all on a blocked punt. Back in the... First drive of the game, went back for a safety as Magoo knees the first one, first one down. They'll just have to do it one more time as long as they get down below 35 seconds on the next snap. But Elida, for the second year in a row, they will improve to 4-0. And, oh. and Magoo with the knee, and that'll do it. Final score on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Bulldogs have a line of 30. Ottawa Glandorf Titans eight. Here in week number four, Ottawa Glandorf falls to 0-1-4. They take on St. Mary's next week and it's a trip to Bath for the Bulldogs next week. Take a time out and return for the post game wrap up when we come back on WOSN. Welcome you back to Alida High School where the Bulldogs are victorious tonight by a final score of 30 to eight. Bulldogs tonight, touchdowns in all four quarters. Ottawa Glandorf got a late score as well. And our final thoughts brought to you by the State Bank. Tonight's broadcast, bringing your post game thoughts. Contact State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, uh, equal housing uh, lender. And Scott, turnovers ended up even. Penalties were pretty close to even as well. However, time of possession went to Alana's direction. They just were able to finish some drives. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Titans kind of, you know, a couple costly penalties. Uh, the Titans just kind of were just kind of out of sync. Elida really, really that first half, first quarter for sure, they really dominated the line of scrimmage, and they uh, it just was didn't go the Titans' way. But a good thing for the Titans is they scored late there in that fourth quarter, and allowed them to uh, maybe build on something for next week. Uh, Elite is a pretty good, pretty good football team. They're going to win a few more games for sure. Uh, that uh, they just were just too much for the Titans tonight. There you have it. Final score: thirty to eight. Alida over Ottawa Glandorf here this evening. Thank our partners all the way down the list tonight for bringing us this game from Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, Structure Outdoor Ohio, Web Insurance Agency, Metzger Financial Services, Citizens National Bank, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Dill's Concrete, Fat Jack's Pizza, TND Interiors, Dr. John Stocker, and the State. Bank. 
From our crew tonight, Jacob O'Neill and Zach Keith, he's Scott Mag. I'm Garrett Mansfield saying good night from Alida.